Hello world, Shelly here, and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest, and today I am checking out from Patrick Ta the Major Skin Cream Foundation and Powder Duo. Let's get it so you can actually see it. Oh look, I'm reflecting and reflecting. Look, it's another version of me. <laughs> Retails for $52, and this breaks down 2.32 ounces or 9 grams of cream and 0.14 ounces or four grams of powder comes in 24 different shades. I have this in the second lightest shade, Fair 2, and this is described as a duo that includes a blendable medium coverage cream foundation paired with a satin finish powder. It moves with the skin. It's an air spun setting powder that blurs the appearance of pores to create a flawless looking skin-like finish. Now. This is a case of social media gotcha girl here. <laughs> Wayne Goss, specifically. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw Wayne Goss's beautiful face, and I slowed my scroll, and I said, what is he wearing? Because his face looked fantastic. He was wearing this, and uh, so I hopped on to Sephora and I ordered it, so here we are. I'm not familiar with Patrick Ta, I haven't followed their work previously. This is the first time I'm trying anything from the brand, so this is all new to me. I need to figure out how to open it, oh, there we go. So that, that top lip comes up, I was trying to leave that behind, ooh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Let's take a look at shade Fair 2, swatched against a few others in my collection. Swatch time. First up is today's foundation from Patrick Ta, the Major Skin Cream Foundation in shade 2 Fair. Second I've got from Estee Lauder, the Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Third up is MAC Studio Sculpt in NW15. And last I've got from Wet n Wild, the Tinted Hydrator in Fair. Already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 48-year-old face. They do recommend applying this to primed skin. So I did prime with the Calare So Blown Primer. They recommend applying this with their brush, of course. I think I am going to apply with fingertips, as is typically my preference when it comes to cream and balm based products i find it's a little bit easier when you've got your body heat to help melt them down into the skin anything that's like a solid a soft solid kind of a thing and so let's just try this out i do have my brush handy i have my sigma f80 sitting right here so we, we may go in with a brush to kind of see how that does but let's just start oh very emollient that little top thing is gonna flip down and drive me crazy but, uh, ooh, picks up, picks up really nicely. Very emollient. Ooh, it looks like I was gonna be surprised at medium coverage, but actually, I can see right off the bat, this is gonna give coverage if we want it. I am going to take it under my eyes and use it as concealer as well. This is a super soft feeling. Very emollient feeling. They say this is for combo oily and dry and normal skin they do not mention dry skin but this feels so richly emollient that i will be shocked if it ends up feeling drying later on now maybe that is because of the finishing powder and i'm gonna go way minimal on the finishing powder because i usually don't set my foundations with powder anymore and that could be part of the equation in their instructions. They do say that you want to powder areas that are prone to oiliness, like your T-zone, but I'm not prone to oiliness anywhere, so I probably will not be setting it with powder. This is lovely. This is just flat out lovely in one pass. That was just friggin' lovely. <laughs> Good shade, good shade for most of the year. It's not gonna work when I'm self tanning, but this is <laughs> this is my color 99.9% .9 of the year. Oh, it does give a little bit of coverage. I'd say light coverage at one pass. Without building it up at all, I would call it solid light coverage at one pass. We got a little bit of coverage on those sunspots. I'm definitely feeling 
redness reduction from one side to the other. Gosh, this feels so nice. This feels like a really silky. Yeah, silky. That's the word. I don't want to put my brush in here because I don't want to get brush hairs in here. Do you see how it kind of, um, can I get it to focus? Focus here, please. Focus here, please. Do you see how it's kind of, this is not focusing where I want it to. You can kind of press it and get it to ridge. Like it's soft. It's a very, it's not as hard pressed as I initially thought. So I'm going to just come in here and give myself just like some little I don't know, dabs of product. And um, let's just try the brush. Let's just blend it out with a brush and see how that goes. What the heck? Might as well, right? Let's just try all the things, shall we? This spreads so easily because it's got like, it's very emollient. It's so emollient that it makes me kind of wonder how oily skin would like this because I feel like it might be too oily for oily skin. But for my dry, parched, dehydrated skin, it feels so good. <laughs> It just feels lovely, lovely. You do get, I'd say, higher coverage with a brush application, which doesn't make a lot of sense because your skin doesn't really absorb product. Sponge versus brush makes sense to me, but yeah, I think it is a little bit, little bit more coverage with the brush. Maybe it just doesn't melt down as quickly when you use a brush versus fingers. But I'm gonna just take a little bit, they say it's buildable, so let's take a little bit more over on this side and try to even things out. And I am gonna use the brush, although I would say brush or fingers, either way it looks beautiful. I'd say the, the application technique is preference-based. They look very similar either way. Yeah, you can totally get medium coverage out of this. I don't know why that is surprising me. I was just expecting a lighter coverage product. But I would say you can totally get medium coverage. I mean, look, my darkest sunspot is just barely peeking through there. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. All right, flip that guy back down. Now, the powder... How did I already make such a mess on my... Oh, I'm so bad. I don't want it to be messy. I want to keep it clean. I got I got product on the edge. All right, cleaning up, cleaning up, because I just, I have to, I have to. Nice thing is that this plastic cover doesn't touch the product, so when you lift it back up, it's not touching the face of the product. You know what I'm saying? Bravo, good design. That would have been easy to overlook. For the powder, let's see. I'm gonna get my BK Beauty. This is the 102. It is just a big old, big old fluffy gorgeousness brush. And let's try it, shall we? So I'm just gonna take basically the tiniest bit and just dab it. I'm gonna do a little swirly swirl on my pores because they said it'll blur your pores. That makes just a smidgy. My peeling skin is a little more obvious with the powder than it was without the powder, but it's pretty sheer. It's a pretty invisible powder, which is good for people like me. Ooh, I like the I like the finish. I like the reflect. Let's zoom in and get a good look at this one. So, I do think the powder does a nice little bit of blurring of pores, although I would say if you're super dry or dehydrated, I think I would skip the powder because the foundation itself looked quite nice even without it. I do have some peeling going on on my chin and it is not really accentuating anything there. I have a little dry skin on my cheeks and at my temples as well. So you can see that just a little bit, but I don't think you can really tell at a conversational distance. So I do think the foundation is doing a nice job at 
hydrating those things away and a little bit of dry skin on my forehead as well. Got a little bit of settling happening into my deeper forehead lines. I am just tempting, attempting to tap them out just a little bit. I'm just gonna tap out my whole face really. Just, this is a damp sponge, just to kind of make sure that powder's melded in. Yeah, I like the finish of this. Nothing strange happening yet. No settling in the lines, nothing unusual. I like the coverage level. I feel like we're in a good medium coverage spot. Let's check the time. It is 1.17. Let me go put the rest of my face on. I will be right back. Back with the Patrick Ta foundation. I was super curious to see if I was going to be able to put cream products over having set with the powder that comes with that foundation. And I'm happy to report no problems. Everything went fine. So bravo to that. I've got no settling into lines, nothing unusual going on. Blending of everything seemed fine. I got some new makeup I want to tell you about. Oh, this was so much fun doing my face today. All right, let's get the basics out of the way. I used Color Street Bronzer Balm. I used the Euphoria Color Changing Blush Oil. And then my highlight was the Merit Bounce Stick. I always forget the name of this thing. Sherlock. Help me, Day Glow Highlighting Balm in the shade Bounce. So that is the blush bronzer highlight. The new makeup though. Oh, I might as well tell you all the older things I'm wearing. Lawless Brows, this is their Soft Brow Wax. Lawless Mascara, one and done. And my pencil is the Flower Beauty Pencil in my tight line. Okay, okay, new stuff, new stuff, new stuff. OMG, whew, okay, Lawless has this lavender line that they just put out. So this is the one palette lavender. Oh, this is like spring. If I was to build a spring color scheme, it would be this. And I have to tell you, well, they blended beautifully. Happy, 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 beautiful, beautiful. But favorite thing about this palette, most palettes, most companies, most color curation will suffice with like a deep taupe for, you know, this is a lighter color scheme. The, the tones of this are very light, you know, light to dark. We are on the light side of the spectrum, right? We got some pastels going on and a lot of companies will just give you a deeper taupe for your darkest shade because a black would obviously be a little too deep for the level of lightness that we have going on here. However, just because we are using lighter tones doesn't mean that we don't still need to be able to create dimension and depth. And the only way to do that is to have a darker tone. But instead of just leaning heavy on that, that taupe and throwing another pastel in here, which doesn't really give you the depth that you need, they went with a deep, cool toned gray, which is brilliant. It's freaking awesome. And so few palettes do this well. And so I wanna shout out whoever does the color curation for Lawless because bravo, bra freaking oh, yes, thank you. Because look, you can give yourself depth without it looking extreme and without it being too dark for a light color scheme. Oh, so happy when I opened the palette and I saw a deep gray. Yes, yes, please. It's beautiful. It's freaking beautiful. You know me and my purples anyway. The other lavender thing that's going on here, they've got lip glosses in this lavender line. The one I'm wearing is Violet... I tried to memorize it before I started and I already forgot. They are plumping, so they give you a little, you know, bzzz, a little bit of a little bit of that plumping feeling. Violet Bloom is the one I'm wearing. And the other one is dun, 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 Lavender Sorbet. Now, 
I want to show you the applicator because it's one of those really nice like hug your lips type of applicators. I just like that, you know, hugs your lips. But yeah, I've, I've had it on for a few minutes now. The, the little tingle is starting to fade away. It's not super strong in term, you know, so if those bother you, I don't think it's too strong. It's just a little bit of a zzz, zzz, little buzz to your to your lips it is fading already in terms of feeling that feeling. Uh, but mm, it's nice because it brings a little blood flow to your lips. It gives you that little plumping effect. It's not sticky. I'm enjoying it. I'm so stoked about this lavender collection. Mm, thank you, Lawless. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're brilliant, you're brilliant, you're brilliant. Anyway, so that's my face. Is that all the things? Did I talk about all the things? I think I talked about all the things. Uh, that's what I got going on. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go get a sandwich, cause that's what I do after I put my face on. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a sandwich, have my lunch, and I might go to Costco. <laughs> I'll come back with a daylight check-in in a bit, and I will come back tonight, give you guys my final thoughts. Do a little daylight check-in at the Costco. Here we are. I'm going to be able to turn around and do a sun check-in. Shade looks good. All right, here we go. This looks pretty nice, I'm thinking. Pretty nice, I'm thinking. How close can we get? There we go. There's the indoor in the Jeep look. <laughs> All right. I'll be back tonight. We'll wrap this one up. 10.33 p.m. That puts us right around the nine hour mark. Let's take a look at how the Patrick Ta Foundation held up. I think it held up very, very well. Looking at the coverage, I did have to blow my nose multiple times. Of course I did. Hello, allergy season. Hi, pollen. You're fantastic. I mean, keep existing. I mean, trees are cool and all, but oh my goodness, you get me every time. So ignore the loss of coverage on the old schnoz here because uh, that was user induced and pollen induced, user reactive. <laughs> Let's zoom in, get a good look at this one. So generally speaking, even on the places where I tend to lose coverage, like my chin, uh, it didn't go too, too bad. I, you know, it's, I see a little bit of redness coming through at the end of the day here, but I've seen much worse. I think coverage pretty much everywhere else with the exception of where I blew my nose looks really good still at this point in the day. I can see just the barrel, barely the edges of some of the peely skin I have on my temple, but you know, that was how we started out. Same with the dry skin on my forehead, but I don't think anything has gotten any worse. And if anything, it might've gotten a little bit better. Blush bronzer highlight are still intact. I don't feel like anything really moved around. I don't even feel like, you know, the coverage has dissipated just a little bit, but it's so graceful and even in the way it's, it's going that I think I'd still have a few more hours that I could wear this and, and still feel all right about being seen in public or whatever. So I think it held up really well. My skin feels great. I don't feel any signs of dryness. I don't feel any kind of tightness. No itching, nothing that indicates to me that I've lost hydration. So I think it's plenty hydrating for dry skin. Even with the powder, I don't think any dehydration is happening. <laughs> Ziva's falling off the back of the chair, but for me, I'm okay. <laughs> So I think if you've got dry skin, it's fine. Had no issues with settling into lines or anything like that. So I think for maturing skin, it is also fine. I wonder if you just saw that fuzzy little piece of cat hair that floated right past the lens of the camera. <laughs> if I had to give a grade to the Patrick Ta Foundation. Thank you, Wayne Goss. It's beautiful. Wow, I'm showing you just what a disastrous mess my vanity is in the reflection. <laughs> 
Thank you, Wayne Goss. You are brilliant. You are wonderful. And I wouldn't have bought this if it wasn't for your post about it on Facebook. So bravo. I like it. Did I say if I had to give a grade to the Patrick Ta, uh, I gotta give it an A. I think it's lovely. I think it's lovely. Would I buy it typically since I don't typically powder my foundation these days? I probably still would. It can't hurt to have a good setting powder. <laughs> and this one doesn't seem to dry me out. I will test that more thoroughly, of course. We just had a ton of rain, so it is not a very dry climate out in the world right now. We've got a good amount of humidity going on, but we're coming out of winter, so I'm dry. <laughs> So I think it performed really well. I gotta give it an A. I'm pleased. Very happy that I picked this one up. So there you have it. Another episode of Foundation Fest is in the books if you like foundation reviews. If you had fun with this one, give me a thumbs up down below. Let me know in the comments. What should I get my grubby paws on next? You know, I don't know. Is this gonna post before the Sephora sale? I think it will. Sephora sale's coming up, y'all. So uh, let me know, what do I gotta buy? The Gucci one's on my list. I've been waiting for the sale for that one cause you know, it's a little spendy, a little spendy. <laughs> but let me know what I should pick up, what you want me to review, what you'd like to see. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.